Hi, this is Sean from One With Nature. This is part four on lymphatic system secrets. And when we left off, we found out what happens when albumin goes into the cellular environment, attracts water, drowns the cells, and the sodium potassium pump, which generates electricity inside each individual cell, is shut down. Now the cells aren't dead, they're just asleep. So what will reverse this situation? Do you remember the textbook of medical physiology that we talked about a few sessions ago? On page 397 of the fifth edition of Dr. Guyton's textbook of medical physiology, we find the statement, quote, the lymphatic system represents an accessory route by which fluids can flow from the interstitial spaces back into the blood. And most important of all, the lymphatics can carry proteins and large particulate matter away from the tissue spaces, neither of which can be removed by absorption directly into the blood capillary." End quote. Now that brings up a very valid point. Once this stuff leaves the blood capillaries, what happens to it? Why can't it go back into the blood capillaries and continue on being recycled back through uh, the bloodstream? Well, remember your blood supply is under pressure, but once it leaves the bloodstream and it enters into the cellular environment, you are in a sub-pressure environment, okay? It's less pressure than what is going on inside the capillaries. So once the albumin leaves, it can't go back in because it'll just be rejected by the, uh, I guess you want to say mists or the spraying action that's continually occurring through the pores in the blood capillary. Once the albumin leaves, once the fluid leaves, it can't get back in. So here comes the lymphatic system, as Dr. Guyton called it, an accessory route so that the fluids that are trapped in this cellular environment can basically be sucked up. All right, It's taken away so that the cells can operate to the peak of their efficiency. Now obviously Dr. Guyton and Dr. H.S. Marison, who we talked about earlier, were far ahead of everyone else. They and their colleagues understood, first of all, that albumin can leave the bloodstream and create havoc inside the cellular environment. When nobody else was really paying attention to them, or didn't want to listen to what they had to say, these guys were miles ahead of everybody else. Do you remember the quote? that I read you from the American Medical Association's Home Encyclopedia of 1989. The large size of the protein molecules prevents them from escaping from the blood into the tissues. That's 1989. These guys already had it figured out back in the 40s. And the, it was theorized back in 1930 by Dr. Drinker that this could happen, but they couldn't prove it till 1948. And then, of course, you remember the quotes I had from Merck Online and other sources which stated that, you know, even as recently as 2005, uh, 2007 even, people in the medical community were still saying that albumin could not escape the bloodstream. But it was already proven back in the 40s that this could happen. Now, let's look at another quote from the textbook of medical physiology, the fifth edition again, page 397, quote, we shall see that this removal of plasma proteins from the interstitial spaces by our lymphatic system is an absolute essential function without which we would die within about 24 hours. So, these guys had a very deep understanding of the function of the lymphatic system. They knew that a certain percentage of your blood proteins, the plasma proteins, namely the albumin, which is the most plentiful blood protein, can indeed escape the blood capillaries, go into the cells, attract and hold water, and not only that, albumin will attract itself to albumin and in this environment and it's going to create basically a, a traffic jam of protein around the cells. Very difficult to break up. Uh, there are some tricks though to get those little bricks of albumin that clog between the cells dissolved. We're going to get into that shortly. So we see the lymphatic system has the ability 
unlike many people thought, for decades to remove the trapped plasma, or we're calling them blood proteins, the albumin, which are causing damage and death to the cells, and which in turn will lead to a loss of energy and eventual pain and suffering. So, what can we do about this? Well, we're going to get into some very simple exercises, some techniques that will stimulate the flow of your lymph system. I'm going to describe them in this audio series later on. I might make uh, some type of video where the exercises are actually demonstrated, but you can find them on the web. Uh, but so we'll we'll go through the five basic techniques that will get your lymphatics up and running. And like I said before, they're easy. You can start doing it before you even get out of your chair. You can do it while you're listening. Now, the easiest way to get your uh, to get your lymphatic system accelerated is simply deep breathing. Do you remember the thoracic duct that runs behind the breastbone through the thymus gland? When you breathe deeply, the lungs expand and compress the thoracic duct. And the fluid that's inside the thoracic duct, this lymphatic fluid, shoots out and goes into what's called the subclavian vein. It's at the base of your neck. 90% of this fluid goes into the left-hand side and the other 10% goes into the right-hand side. Now, how is this known? Well, in 1979, a doctor by the name of Jack Shields took a camera and actually put it inside of a gentleman who was on a treadmill. He wanted to prove that deep breathing was more effective in moving lymph fluid than simply exercising, like, uh, you know, walking, just some mild walking or weightlifting. All right, so they inserted a small camera into the subject's neck where the main lymphatic duct, known as the thoracic duct, returns the lymph and the chyle back into the bloodstream. It was noted that without deep breathing, there was virtually no movement of the lymph fluid. But Dr. Jack Shields asked the gentleman to take a deep breath, and as soon as the chest was expanded at its full inhalation, the lymph fluid shot like a geyser directly back into the bloodstream. The cycle of recirculation was complete. Deep breathing was conclusively proven to stimulate the flow of lymph. So, first of all, deep breathing, you know, for most of us should be a cakewalk. And it's interesting, if you do some deep breathing, you know, let's say you decide you're going to test this out and you want to do five minutes of deep breathing at the top of every hour you're going to find out that if you have a lymphatic system that's not used to circulating freely you're going to have some effects uh, you might have some tiredness um, you might have some headaches you might have some joint pain because you are accelerating the flow of a system inside you that is partially stagnant okay it is a slow moving system but when you start accelerating it just by simply deep breathing exercises you're gonna. A lot of people are gonna find that they're going to have uh, basically Herxheimer reactions, which probably isn't the most accurate term. But as far as the symptoms, that being headaches, you know, maybe some nausea, joint aches, uh, pains. It could be anything going on inside you. Now, this is gonna happen when you're doing uh, deep breathing exercises. A lot of people will actually. Uh, you know, find themselves in other exercises where they're accelerating the flow of the lymphatic fluid. They just don't know it. And they get sick. And then they stop that exercise and they never do it again. But what's really happening is they're actually cleansing the system. You know, they're accelerating the filtration and the cycling that should be naturally occurring but isn't because a lot of people just are not physically active. So, number one technique that we're going to talk about today is the deep breathing. Not the number one technique of all time, but deep breathing, you know, you can do that while you're sitting here watching this video. You can take deep breaths. You can do deep breaths for five minutes at the top of every hour all day long. Just make a concentrated effort to do some deep breathing. It's guaranteed to create a flow of lymphatic fluid. We're going to get into the other simple exercises next.